Man, they didn't even let you do like a trial version. Like at least nowadays they give you 60 days or 90 days, something like that. Back then it looks like it was just you're licensed or you're not. In this video, I'm going to install a call manager version five to compare it to a call manager 11.5.1 and see what the differences are like. So already I see that the install looks the same so far. Uh, this looks different. We have the question about if we want to move forward with um, the version here. One thing different in the top left, you can see it's in yellow text where it says Cisco Unified Communications Manager 5.1.3. I'll go ahead and proceed. I don't want to apply an upgrade patch. It's asking about importing Windows data. I don't think the newer call managers do that. Maybe it's something I overlooked, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't. The, the time layout looks different to me. Um, I'll leave this as a yes. I'll do automatic. I don't want to change the MTU size. I don't want to do DACP. I'll go ahead and put in a host name real quick. The text is yellow, just like what I stated earlier which um, I think that's different than compared to newer versions. Got to go ahead and get in the rest of this mask here. And I'll give it its default gateway. I don't, I'm not going to do DNS. We'll give it its admin. This is for the platform administration username and password. And this is the platform information. I'll just rip through that real quick. It is the first node in the cluster. So this is different. This one is way different. You don't get the option to do NTP. You have to do it. Uh, and then we'll put in this, this platform security password. No, thank you. And it's done. One last password. This is for the application user. All right. And now the install is going to go ahead and run. I'll stop the recording for now and um, I'll bring it back once the um, install is done and I'll get the web interface up. I just got done installing call manager five just because I found the ISO and I wanted to see what was different between the newer versions of CUCM and the CUCM version five. Before getting into looking at things in the GUI, I want to jump into the CLI. So let's take a look at show question mark. This list, I'm going to have to log into my 11.5 to see how different it is. Yeah, the list in the newer version is way longer. What about utils? That one's pretty long as well. I don't see an option for diagnose. So it looks like we wouldn't be able to do a utils diagnose test. I'm going to try utils DB replication runtime state. So there is no runtime state command. It looks like. Nope. Okay. So right there, right out of the bat, the bat, that's a huge troubleshooting command that um, isn't available. I'm sure that if I took a little while to poke around in here, I'd find some other stuff as well. But we'll move on to the web interface. So already you can see the newer version looks way better. Right, All of this is stuff that is to be expected but it's just interesting to see it. Like I don't even see a navigation drop down menu on this one. This is such a blank page, no copyright, nothing. All right, so I'll go ahead and I'll log in here. Another thing about this, um, I tried to log into this web interface earlier before doing the video just to make sure that I could log in I was unable to log in and 
it turns out that in the older version 5 CUCM, there was a default username, which is CCM administrator. And you only set the password in the install, which is something that, you know, if you're watching the video from the beginning, when I did the install, you could see where the password was not, or the username was not provided. They just asked for the password. So already this interface looks like it has about the same number of options up here. It looks like they swapped out advanced features for voicemail. So here's where they had voicemail, whereas um, voicemail goes under advanced features here. And you can see the long list of advanced features that are in the newer version, which um, just seems to not be present in the older version. So let's take a look at this. This list is way shorter. Going back over here, uh, you have like geolocation filters, E911. Let's see about application server. Yeah, they have that here. I guess it's not too much shorter. Okay, let's take a look at the enterprise parameters. So the first thing that pops out to me is that here you have phone URL parameters and secure phone URL parameters. But over here, um, you only have phone URL parameters. Let's see if it mentions the cluster security mode. Yeah, right here. Okay. And we'll check out the service parameters as well for the CCM service. They have the option to set it back to default, save, and advanced option here. Let's see how different the icons look. They actually put the names next to them, but it looks like they still have the same icons that they always had. Let's see how long this list is. It looks about the same to me. Yeah, no, I had to scroll a whole lot more for that. The help page. I love those help pages in the newer version. Looks like it was just as useful back then too. Call routing. That list looks significantly shorter. Look at that. Transformations, mobility, HTTP profile, call control discovery, global dial plan replication, call park. Let's see what they got over here. They got call park, but they've got, they're missing almost everything else that I was just reading off. Media resources. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Advanced features already. We know that this has far more um, options than what the old one had. I'm curious to see if the Cisco voicemail port wizard was in version five. It was. All right, for device, I, I wonder if they had um, SIP trunks. It looks like they're going to. Yep, they did. That's a surprise to me. Let's see what type of phones they had. That is a very short list compared to what we see in newer versions of CUCM. Again, this is all like I expected this, but it's just interesting to me to see that.
Cisco CTL client. Axle SQL Toolkit. I'm so used to only going straight for RTM2 that I don't know if that's, so yeah, it's still a thing here. That's an interesting tool. I'll have to take a look at that later. Yeah, so um, how many total? 13 records, 13 records. So nothing much different there. I want to see what the end users look like on this. Man, look at how short that page is. Not too much shorter, I guess. I don't know. I feel like it is. It's different when you're scrolling up and down the page because you can feel the number of scrolls that you do. Like for this one, it's just like, boom, way more difficult on the eye. This is much easier on the eye. Let's take a look. They've got serviceability. I wonder how much different that looks. Uh, it doesn't look too different. This looks almost exactly the same. The biggest difference that I that just jumps out at me is that the newer versions have the log set to detailed by default at least for this particular service. I'll go ahead and activate these while I'm here. This all looks the same to me. Let's see, um, one, two, three, four, five, six different pages. How many over here? Update fails are supposed to call manual. Ah, uh, yeah, I've not licensed it. That's another big difference is how you license it. It's changed a lot. Uh, licensing, I mean, has changed m multiple times. One, two, three, four, five. So I think it was six on the other one, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so not much different there. Man, they didn't even let you do like a trial version. Like at least nowadays they give you 60 days or 90 days, something like that. Back then it looks like it was just, you're licensed or you're not. Let's see what the reporting page looks like. Um, looks very similar. To what we have today. A big difference here, this is at 348 tables. Um, let's see here. This might take a little while to come along because I don't have my other nodes turned on. And so that might make things, uh, might make the system get a little confused. Let's take a look at the OS administration page. Not too different. I don't know if that's in the OS admin page on the newer versions. One thing I noticed is that I wasn't forced to log in over here when I switched over. Yeah, so. So you used to be able to restart the system. What is this? Restart current. Are you sure you want to restart the machine? Press restart shutdown. No, I don't want to do that. You can do switch version, shutdown system. I wonder why they removed that from the OS admin page. So if you look here, it's these drop down menus. Whereas over here, it's Security certificate management. Just one option. Where over here you go certificate, security certificate management. And then you can delete or regenerate a certificate. You can display certificates. Now this is definitely different. 
because over here it just displays all of them. Trust, identity, sorry, own. None of this craziness. Now you gotta select which one. Look at that. MD5 with RSA. Hmm. I'm going to see if I can get the uh, Tomcat certificate to display for the newer version so that I can take a look at how different this um, part is. Hmm. They don't show it. SHA-256 with RSA. What was the other one? MD-5 with RSA. So it looks like to generate a CSR, you gotta go through this weird page. Okay, and then you'd have to go back through it to download it, it looked like. Let's see how different this looks. Yeah, that's way different. So there, there were only two options on the other list. Yeah, look at that. Way different. Hmm. Okay. Well, I think that's about all I'm going to do on this one. Um, if there were any differences that you noticed in the older version compared to the newer version, which I had not pointed out, then um, go ahead and comment down below and let me know. Let me know what you saw uh, different. If you think I should go ahead and get the CUCM li um, licensed and register a phone to it and mess around and see maybe... How different do the call manager logs look? Or, um, let me see, I meant to go back over here. Or if there's any particular feature you thought I should test uh, on here. Let's see. Looks like a tenant console is maybe built right into the CUCM back in the day. Maybe I can test that if I register a phone. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Let me know whatever was different that you noticed. And uh, maybe should I go get a, an even older version of Call Manager and try to install that version 4, 3, 2? I don't know. Let me know. Thanks for watching.